Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. What would you think if I told you that there was a mic that worked with all of your video cameras? This device would work with your mirrorless camera. It even works with your iPhone, any model, any year, and your Android phones, whatever you have, even when the spring weather is absolute. It will even work with any of your 360 cameras. All you have to do is sync it afterwards. It's not gonna, you can actually sync it right onto it wirelessly but the quality gets reduced enough that you would you're better off just to sync it after and post and not do it wirelessly it could be your gopro camera or anything any of your action cameras that you might have and just as easily it could be your dji pocket 2. it really doesn't matter which camera that you use or which video source you have you can use the same mic for all of these purposes i almost forgot it even works with a drone, any kind of drone. And because it's not wireless, it doesn't even matter how far away you are from it. You can fly it as much as you want and do anything that you want with it. That's definitely something you can't do otherwise. To be fair, the microphone that I'm talking about is actually a field recorder. And that field recorder slash microphone that I'm referring to is the InstaMic. And that's what I'm wearing right here. Let's go back into the studio and I'll show you what I'm talking about. My hunt for great audio, when I'm, especially when I'm out and about walking around, started when I bought the um, Rode Wireless Go 2. It's a great system. It's wireless. It allows you to have the onboard mic right here and record directly into the camera. Now the one thing that I noticed quite often as I was using it is I would either be in an environment that was very loud, which made whoever was being recorded, including myself, speak way too loudly so that it would end up clipping within the receiver or the transmitter itself, and then the audio would be ruined. Uh, at least it would be ruined on board of the camera. Where it wasn't ruined though, it was when it was creating its own backup recording on the device itself. So I'd always end up using that instead. This happened so many times uh, over the course of uh, recording that uh, I started just using this as a, a recording device itself or as a field recorder. So the only downside of using this as a, as a field recorder is that it requires kind of a long press, like a three second press just to get it going. And once it's going, it stays on and it records no matter what. There's no pausing it, there's no doing anything like that. Now, the other side of it too is you actually have to have it set so that it records when it turns on. If you don't have it set and you're out in the field and you want it to do that, you need to use the app. You need to have a special cable that will allow you to set that up on the fly, which is often uh, not an easy thing to do and it's caught me off guard a couple times. The other thing that's caught me off guard is after doing a firmware update, uh, it's no longer recording on board and you're not aware of that and you just assume that it is and you lose all of your recording. So all of that, especially the UI part of it and having to um, you do that long press, uh, led me to look for a field recorder that's not just uh, a small field recorder like the Zoom F2 for example, which is a great field recorder, but it requires a lavalier mic. It requires having a wire run from the lavalier mic down through your clothing to the device, and then you have to start and stop it from there. It's not a huge pain, but it's enough of a pain so that when you're in a hurry or you just don't wanna be bothered with it, you just don't feel like doing it. This led me to do a search for something similar that's just a field recorder that's small enough to wear, similarly to either the DJI uh, wireless mic or the Rode Wireless Go 2, but that just can be synced afterwards. And that led me to this little device, which is the InstaMic. Let's take a look at how small it is and how it, how it uh, compares to everything else. First, let's take a look at the size of the InstaMic compared to a few other microphones. The first one on the left is the Rode Wireless Go 2, and you can see that it's a good two or two and a half times bigger than the InstaMic. On your right of the InstaMic is the Zoom F2BT, which although it's not actually a microphone, you have to plug in a, a lavalier with it, you can see that it's quite a bit bigger, almost three times bigger overall, um, 
while they're all about the same thickness. Let's take a look at the Instamic and how to use it manually without the phone app. First thing you want to do is put it into boot up mode, which is to hold the button until you see it flash red. So it's about a second and a half. Then you'll see it flashing so that it's booting up. Then once it's in that green mode, it's in standby. You can just now push the button here for until it goes red again. And then it's immediately recording a 32 bit float wave file internally. You have 16 megabytes worth of Sorry, 16 gigabytes worth of storage on board, which is about 16 hours worth or more. I'm not sure how much. I'll flash it up on screen. So now to stop recording, you do the same thing. Push until you see the red flash and then it's on standby mode again. If you want to turn it back off, just hold it until it flashes like that and then it's off. Super fast, very straightforward. Now let's take a quick look at how you use the uh, app made for Instamic. First screen that you'll see gives you three options and the top one is really the only one I'm going to talk about because it's what allows you to use it as an internal recorder or a field recorder. The two on the bottom are wireless options. Uh, the middle one for your phone and then the bottom one is a 16 kilohertz uh, wireless option for Insta 360s and any camera that uses that sort of uh, way of connecting. I don't personally like those because of all the compression and the de degradation in quality. So let's go into the audio recorder. This is where you would see a list of a whole bunch of your devices if you have more than one. In this view, you're just getting a view of what's going on. You can tell that it's not recording at the moment, but it's on standby. That's why it's connected. So if I click on there, I can now record. If I had multiple devices, I could use that TC option to sync multiple devices. When I click record, it starts. You can see that it starts flashing red. That means it's going and I can turn off the LEDs if I want by clicking on that LED button on the side. So that's uh, been turned off. Now I'll turn it back on. I can use the lock button that's on there to stop anyone from being able to shut it off while it's on somebody. I can set the dB level um, on the bottom here. It says 15 dB. That means I have it at automatic because it wasn't that before. And then um, along the bottom, I can use the Bluetooth option to show you all my options again. I can go back to the uh, main options that I showed you at the beginning by hitting the home option. Go to the record by hitting that middle thing. And then if I shut off record, I can go into my settings. I can think, change the auto gain. I can see all my options for how I want to record, which I've selected 32-bit float, of course. Auto LED off, uh, sample rates there. Uh, I can change the equalizer if I want. I can rename the mic. I can change all kinds of things down here, as you can see on the bottom. Anyways, I didn't want to get too deep into that. I just want to see, show you roughly how, how it works and not get too deep into it. Very useful app, and I've been using this whenever I can't see the microphone, like if it's covered by a, a wind muff or if it's behind clothes. <music>So here's a test comparing the quality of a bunch of different mics. One is on top of my camera and that's a boom mic and it's the uh, Rode VideoMic NTG. On me I have the Zoom F2 with the Lavalier 2 plugged in on my chest. I also have the Rode VideoMic 2 on my chest recording internally, not wirelessly. And I also have the Instamic on me recording a 32-bit float. This is to compare the sound quality between all four and I'm gonna play this clip four times so you, that you can compare it each time. And you can see where I made my mistakes, but I'm gonna try to cut those out. So here's a test comparing the quality of a bunch of different mics. One is on top of my camera and that's a boom mic and it's the uh, Rode VideoMic NTG. On me, I have the Zoom F2 with the Lavalier 2 plugged in on my chest. I also have the Rode VideoMic 2 on my chest recording internally, not wirelessly. And I also have the Instamic on me recording a 32-bit float. This is to compare the sound quality between all four. And I'm gonna play this clip four times so you, that you can compare it each time. And you can see where I made my mistakes, but I'm gonna try to cut those out. So here's a test comparing the quality of a bunch of different mics. One is on top of my camera and that's a boom mic and it's the uh, Rode VideoMic NTG. 
On me, I have the Zoom F2 with the Lavalier 2 plugged in on my chest. I also have the Rode VideoMic 2 on my chest, recording internally, not wirelessly. And I also have the Instamic on me, recording at 32-bit float. This is to compare the sound quality between all four. And I'm going to play this clip four times so yeah, that you can compare it each time. And you can see where I made my mistakes. But I'm going to try to cut those out. So here's a test comparing the quality of a bunch of different mics. One is on top of my camera and that's a boom mic and it's the uh, Rode VideoMic NTG. On me, I have the Zoom F2 with the Lavalier 2 plugged in on my chest. I also have the Rode VideoMic 2 on my chest recording internally, not wirelessly. And I also have the Instamic on me recording at 32-bit float. This is to compare the sound quality between all four and I'm gonna play this clip four times so yeah, that you can compare it each time. And you can see where I made my mistakes, but I'm gonna try to cut those out. Now I did that, turned on the recording, as you can see from what I just did. So I can just stick that back in my pocket. And now I can just walk normally. And you can now hear that I'm recording through the Instamic, and that's right here uh, with a windscreen on it on this pretty windy day. And that was all it took to do it. Now if I want to stop recording, I can just push on this or I can just take out my phone. I see that it's recording still. I'm going against quite a strong wind now. That's a good uh, indication of how good this will be when I'm recording. If I want to stop the recording, I can just push this. And you're still stuck with the recording that's directly off of the, uh, the 360. Another reason to use a field recorder or the Instamic, for example, is so that you can put a stereo mic on board your camera, which will capture all of the ambient sounds all around you in stereo, no less. And then you can have the field recorder, or in this case, the Instamic, recording just your voice nice and close up. That way you can turn either of them up or down, whichever suits the scene best. So with, here's what it sounds like when I'm not using any background and you can hear that there's no more sound from all around and this is what it's like here's what it's like when I turn it back up so you can hear all of the ambient sounds it's a really nice way to record the other bonus is that this is 32-bit float so I'm not gonna blow anything out if I accidentally make a loud so sound or if something is really loud near me So finally, you've made it to the end of, or almost the end of the video. I'm just going to go through a few pros and cons and who this uh, device is actually for. Let's start with the pros. Size and weight wise, there's really nothing on the market that's quite as small as this. It will fit in any space that you have and behind and under clothing, very easy to use. Compatibility wise, since we're not dealing with a wireless microphone in the way that I'm using it, it will work with anything as long as you're willing to sync the audio with the video after the fact. Uh, sound quality, it's one of the best sounding microphones that I've used. It works a lot better or sounds a lot better than the DJI mic, which I've only been able to compare once, but also the Rode Wireless Go 2. Those can be EQ'd to sound a bit better, but this sounds pretty great right out of the box. 32-bit float, it's uh, something that you hear a lot about these days and having 32-bit float and the ability to fix any clip that you might have at any point is a big deal. You never have to worry about what your audio gain level is at any point. Very useful. Just turn it on and go. Now, ease of use. 
um, as you saw from the way that I turned the thing on and, and get the audio uh, recording, it's about the easiest thing I've used so far. And you can lock it so that you don't have to worry about it. Couldn't be easier. Cons. Now, cons are, these are all pretty trivial, but you have to have something. Um, one of my silliest but also bugs me um, issues that I have with this is that it uses a micro USB cable and not USB-C. I don't like flipping cables and I already have a dedicated USB-C cable ready to go on my computer all the time and this doesn't have that. Still, it's still worth it. Um, now the wind muff is a little too big for my liking or let's say way too big. Unlike the uh, clip-on ones that you have for the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the DJI mic, this doesn't clip on just to the top. It's a wind muff that covers the entire microphone or entire recorder, as you can see in some of the clips early on uh, in this video. About triples the size and how conspicuous the, the mic is when you have it on. I'd, I'd much rather see something a lot smaller in the, in the long run. Battery life uh, for recording is only 3.5 hours. That's plenty for me and for this type of video, but if you're a wedding f uh, videographer, or doing something that lasts all day, 3.5 hours isn't a great amount of time. But if you have a bunch of these, you can uh, charge them up over time. But yeah, the cost adds up. Having at about eight to 10 hour battery life would be great. In fact, I think it would even be worth it to increase the size of the, of the microphone in order to get a better battery life. Just my opinion, of course. Now, um, this is a weird one, but one that happens, um, I've had this problem with other mics. The magnet clip that, that uh, it comes with is great. It's the perfect thing to keep it uh, secured onto a jacket or on your clothes. Even under this, I have it underneath here using the magnet clip right now. And magnets, when you pull a microphone off when you're finished, especially when you're not thinking about it or you're in a hurry, it's easy to pull them off and then the magnet stays in your jacket or your shirt and will slide out and onto the ground silently so that you forget about it until much later. This actually happened to me within the first 10 minutes of me using this mic. Now I continually check, I'm very paranoid, I'm using a cheap magnet from, uh, from Amazon right now in, while I'm waiting for something more powerful. But yeah, I'd like to see some way of avoiding that, but I don't even have a suggestion of how to fix that problem. Even a clip would be nice to have as another option, as opposed to the Velcro and the other clips that come with it. Although I'm sure some people like those as well. And finally, who is this recorder actually for? I prefer to look at it for who isn't it for, since this thing is to me almost a perfect device. For, so the people I wouldn't suggest use this type of recorder are those who like to record directly onto their phone or doing TikTok type videos and those things where you don't want to deal with audio after the fact, you just upload and don't even think about it. Where this comes in super handy is for people who have no problem syncing video using some kind of uh, video application after the fact. When you do the old clap or anything like that and for syncing after the fact, it's so easy to do that it, it's, it just seems crazy not to do it. You don't get any issues with compression when you're sending the signal wirelessly. It improves your audio quality so much that it's always gonna be worth it. Anyways, I hope that uh, covered it. Thanks a lot for hanging around to the end. Um, I enjoyed spending so much time with this device just figuring out all the things I like and uh, the very few things that I don't. So um, if you have any questions that you'd like to um, ask me, feel free to do so in the comments below. Give me a like if it was worthwhile and I uh, will see you in the next video. Thanks and see you soon.